In this video, we're going to learn the hand shapes that are used in American Sign Language. Now, what these are, are not just the alphabet or numbers, but these are names that we have given to the hand shapes that you see in most sign language instruction books and um, that are used in the language. It's a way to break down the language into its hand shapes and parts so that you can better describe a sign and then this will be helpful to you if you're a sign language student to be able to write down the, a sign when you see you might meet a deaf person somewhere and they do a sign you ask what does that mean they tell you and then you want to write it down quickly if you don't have some system of writing it down just to write down one little sign could take you a full page but if you have a system of uh, annotating or writing down uh, describing a sign and you do it in an organized way you can do it in just one or two lines um, so first there are there are a few different aspects when you describe a sign there are the hand shapes different hand shapes um, that we use when we're doing a sign for example when you sign the sign for help you use the open a or some people say a spread the open A, you don't just use the A. You don't sign help like this. You sign it like this with the thumb up. So we call that open A. So it's important to know the difference of different hand shapes. Uh, the other thing is the orientation of the palms. Are they up, down, out, in? And then my right hand, when it's facing that way, we call this side out. You can call it whatever you want, because in the end, it's just a system of writing it down for you. It's not like you're writing a book or anything. So this is side out. Side out for my left hand would be that way. So this helps you. Saying side out is really helpful, so you don't have to say, my, my right palm is facing the left. You save all those words. You just know that it means side out. So up down, out, in, side out. And you rarely will put your hands this way. You rarely will ever put your hands this way to make a sign, so don't worry about that. The other thing is where on your body are you putting your hands? Are you putting it on your head, on your ears, on your nose, on your jaw, on your chin, on your neck, on your chest, on your shoulder, on your forearm, on the back of your hand, on your palm, so all of those you would name, but most signs happen right here. They're done right here, and we call this neutral space chest. Because it's not on the chest, because some signs like the sign for happy, you actually touch your chest, or the sign for heart, heart. Right, where is my, I have to remember where my heart is, heart. Um, you actually put your finger right on your heart, okay? Or please, you put your hand right on your chest, not right on your heart, but right on your chest. Um, but most signs occur right out here. They're not touching anything. And those we call this neutral space chest. So they happen here. But if you put one right here in front of your chin, but not quite touching your chin, you could say neutral space chin, neutral space nose, um, neutral space ear, neutral space temple. Neutral space is what we say when it's a little bit of a distance from that part of your body. Um, and then finally is the movement. How are your hands moving? Are they rotating around each other? Or is only one hand moving? And I did forget one thing. There are three types of signs. There are one-handed signs, like the sign for think, the sign for talk, the sign for smell, the sign for see, or see. Then there are two-handed signs. There are two types of two-handed signs. There are two-handed signs which are symmetry condition. We call symmetry symmetrical like a mirror where both hands basically do the same exact movement like the sign for to ask for or to request. Both hands do exactly the same thing. If I took one hand away, if I had a mirror there, it would show this. So that's why we call it symmetrical symmetry condition. So you have one-handed signs, think, talk, Smell, C, capital, boss, and then you have two-handed signs, ask for, um, 
school. Now, school, you could call this a, a symmetry condition, even though the hands are not exactly, they're not a mirror image of each other. So you would have to describe that. Um, another symmetry condition sign would be um, uh, America. America. So again, it's not exactly symmetry, but you are, both hands are basically doing the same thing. They're interlocked and then they're working together. And then the last one is called dominant condition. Dominant. Why? Because one hand is the dominant hand in the sign and it's doing the motion and the other hand is just staying still. It, it takes one shape usually and then the other hand does some kind of action. So some of, some of those are like the sign for money. This is the sign for money. Like here's the money in your hand. So the bit we call this the base hand is my left hand because I'm right-handed. My left hand is my base hand and my right hand does the movement. So now I need to know the name of this hand shape and the name of this hand shape to describe for this sign. Another dominant um, condition sign would be like the sign for discuss. The sign for discuss. See, this is the same hand shape as I used for money, but now I'm using this hand shape and I'm tapping my finger in my palm. So this is the movement and this so this would be the dominant hand, my right hand. If you're lefty, if you're left-handed, it would be the opposite way. Um, and I tap it in the base hand. But the base hand could be this way too, like the sign for bread. The sign for bread, now my hand is facing down. It's not facing up. This is not bread. This is not bread. The sign for bread is like this. So my base hand is right here, neutral space chest. And then I use this hand shape like this for bread. Um, this is the sign for church. Church. Or it could be like this. Church. So here's the base hand and then this hand does, the dominant hand does the movement with this hand shape which you probably know is the letter C. Um, so these, those are the three types of signs. We'll maybe talk about that more later. So let's go over the different hand shapes. So I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. You can watch this part of the video again and um, will just uh, practice the hand shapes um, now. So we have, and I'll say the name of them too, A, open A, B, open B, bent B, C, or C, D, E, F, open F, G, H, I. Now you'll notice we're going to skip J because J is just the I going like this. So, I, K, L, bent L. All right, so we have L and then when we bend the index finger, it's bent L. And we use this hand shape for some signs. That's what you would call it. Bent L. M, N, O, baby O. Some people call this baby O, right? Because you have O, but now we drop all the fingers and we're just left with the thumb and the index finger together making an O. Baby O. O. No P because P is the same as K. Q is really the same as the G, so there's no letter Q for the hand shapes. It's G, but you could call it Q if you want to, if that's what you remember. G, um, R, S, T, U, V, or 2. You can call it either one, V or 2, because it's the same hand shape for V and 2. And then bent V, bent V. You can call it bent 2 if you want. Well, we, you normally would call it bent V, W, X, Y. There is no Z because the Z is just this hand shape. So what is this hand shape? This is now 1. 1. There's no 2 because we have bent V. We have V for 2. Then 3, 4, 5 bent five, 
in some books they'll call this hand the, this hand shape the claw because it looks like a claw right so you can say claw whatever's easier for you or bent five then we have this hand shape which is a combination of the one and the eye so you can call this one dash eye or you can call it horns some people call it horns one dash eye or horns then you have this hand shape which a lot of you know is the I love you it comes from the letter I then the L in love and then the letter Y and when you put them all together you get I L Y so you have I love you this is the way some deaf people say I love you a lot of times they just use it as a, a greeting or you see it in a lot of photos um, so this hand shape which is you can call it, it it will take up a lot more writing to write the I love you hand shape so you can just call it I dash L or L dash I whichever way you want to I dash L um, for this hand shape it is used for in a lot of signs too like airplane um, airport and so um, California uh, so that's that hand shape which ones did I forget now so of the numbers oh, let's continue with the numbers three four five six seven eight and then a very important hand shape is open eight. This hand shape, open eight. Doesn't seem like it, but this hand shape is used in probably hundreds of signs. So open eight. You want to know that one, right? This is the number eight. This is open eight. Nine is the same as the letter F, and open would just be it's open F. Okay? Um, so from there, let's see. So that's, those are all the hand shapes that I can think of now. Um, if I forgot any, please let me know in the, in the comments. But um, so let's put some of these so you could see how you would actually use these signs, uh, these words, these des the names to describe a sign. So if we have the sign, for example, talk, the sign for talk, it's done like this. So. First of all, you have the hand shape. The hand shape. First of all, you say it's a one-handed sign, right? It's a one-handed sign. You don't do talk. You don't do talk. Well, I think some people, yeah, sometimes they do that for certain things. So this is talk. So it's a one-handed sign. The hand shape is a four. The orientation of the palm is side out. It's not out. It's not in. It's not up. It's not down. It's side out. I'm. I'm facing it to my, my right hand to my left. So we call that side out is the orientation of the palm. And the location of the hand is on the chin. It's actually touching my chin. You touch your chin, the index finger on the chin. So, and now, th so that's the location, the orientation, the palm, The it's a one-handed sign. And now is there movement? Do I just go like this or is there movement? Well, there is movement. You do. So I would, there is where you actually write a phrase. Tap index finger on chin. You don't have to worry about saying what part of the index finger because you already said the orientation is side out. So you have to do it that way. You're not going to do it this way. You're not going to do it this way. Um, so that's, that's, you'd say, uh, tap on chin, tap on chin. So there's, there's one. Let's do another one. Um, how about this one? Uh, well, let's do a new, uh, let me see, one-handed sign um, in neutral space chest. Uh, well, no, let's do, let's do this one. So right here, this is the sign for capital or boss or captain. It has a lot of different meanings. So. It's a one-handed sign, so you have that. What's the hand shape? Well, the hand shape is the C. It's the C. So you put the C there. What's the orientation of the palm? It's down. Your hand is facing down. It would be hard to have your hand facing almost any other way up here. I guess you could do it like that, but it's facing down. And it's, um, where is it located? It's located on the shoulder, on the shoulder. And what's the movement? Tap fingers on shoulder. So there, you should be able to write that all in one line, right? So it's one-handed, C, 
down sh shoulder, not neutral space shoulder, it's not up here, it's shoulder, tap fingers on shoulder. So you could do that all in one line. Um, okay, now a two-handed symmetry condition sign. Let's do um, Confusion. Is that one too hard? No. Confusion. That's a good sign. So, uh, symmetry condition sign. Confusing. Confusion. So we have um, symmetry condition sign. So we know it's a two-handed sign. The hand shape is the five, the bent fives, or the claws. The bent fives. The um, orientation is. The right, now you have to say what each one. The right hand is facing down and the left hand is facing up. So right hand, right hand down, left hand up. Of course, because this is a two-handed sign, it's gonna take a little bit more space. Or, uh, location, neutral space chest. It's happening right in front of your chest, which is where most two-handed signs will happen. And then the movement. Uh, and this is where it sometimes can get a little bit trickier. So the hands are not touching, so you might want to put that, you're not, your hands, it would be hard for your hands to touch, but they could in another sign possibly. So you want to make alternating circles, um, like face, the hands are facing and they make alternating circles, like something is mixed up or confused. So this is confusion. All right. Um, Another symmetry condition sign is, uh, well, let's do to ask for, like we said that one before, to ask for. To ask for is like this. So it's symmetry condition sign, hand shape, open B, right? Because this is the B, this is the open B. Orientation of the palms, side out. This one's facing side out, this one's facing side out. And now, Location, neutral space chest. Neutral space chest. It's happening right here. And now the only thing that's missing is the movement. So now you have, this one actually changes while you're doing it. So you start, neutral space chest, start with index fingers, start with fingers pointing out, right? That way is out bring hands, bring palms together, finishing with fingers pointing up. So that will take a little bit longer. But still, all in all, this will take you maybe two lines. And as you practice it, you'll get your own abbreviations and you can write down a sign in just one or two lines. It's really helpful when you're first learning sign language um, because you can see so many signs, well, Nowadays, because you have your smartphone, you could probably just film the sign and then write a little notation right on the screen with an app um, saying what the sign is. So that will be useful. Um, okay, but if you want to do it the old-fashioned way or write it in a, a notebook, then here's a way for you to do it. So the last one is, or if your batteries go dead or something like that and your technology isn't working. So the last one is, um, because the reason I'm going over this too is, it's one thing for you to look up, there are a lot of apps that have ASL dictionaries. So you can look up a sign from English into sign language, but what do you do when you see a sign and it's not in a dictionary? Because you will learn a lot of signs that are not in any dictionary. And then how do you write that down? And how do you remember it? Okay, so then the last one is dominant condition signs. The dominant condition sign, like, um, like the sign for help. Okay, so the sign for help is kind of tricky because a lot of people do it backwards. They do it like this. And there's a little bit of a controversy on which way to do it. Well, the way I learned to do it is, see this hand, it looks like it would be this way. Because usually when you do a um, dominant condition, the right hand, if you're righty, that's the one that has the different shape. The left hand usually is a B or like this or an S or facing downward or may, maybe palm upward and an open B hand shape. But in this case, um, the concept is that this hand is helping the other hand. The etymology of the sign, you'll see like in some books they said the old, the old way of signing this was like 
to help somebody. You're, you're helping them, you're holding their arm for them. And then the sign evolved into this, the sign for help, or like this. So, um, so the dominant, so this is a dominant condition sign. The base hand or the left hand is an open A or A spread because the thumb is open like this. It's not an A. And the dominant hand is actually the open B. And the orientation of the palms is the base hand, the A, is facing in a little bit to the side, a little bit, not exactly in, but a little bit to the side. And then the, because they are your hands and they're connected to your arms, a lot of times they will be on an angle. They're not going to be perfectly this way or perfectly that way. Um, so your dominant hand is the open B and it will be also, uh, it, the orientation is up. It's up. It's not out, not in, not side out, not down. It's up. And both of them happen right here, neutral space chest. Again, where most of two-handed signs occur, neutral space chest. So, you, um, the movement is like, like this. It actually has a, a few different movements, but the base sign would just be like this for help. So, you say the, le the left hand, the, the pinky, I would say pinky side of left hand in palm, of right hand. Move both hands upward two times and neutral space chest and that would be the movement for the sign. So that's a brief description of how to um, describe your signs in words so that you can write them down in a notebook if you ever needed to do that to be able to um, yeah, write down notes uh, on, on your signs when you see them, if you're watching somebody uh, interpret or you're just having a conversation with a deaf person and they're patient enough to, uh, you, to let you write your, the, the, to describe the sign down or you do it after the conversation. You're, you saw a sign, hopefully you understand most of the signs, but you saw one sign over and over again and you know if you don't write it down, you're going to forget it. So, um, and I don't know how much your deaf friends are going to want you to videotape them to, Hey, do that sign again. And I'm going to videotape you, um, with my camera. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to record you rather. So, uh, this is a way for you to write it down and then you can study it later and try to, but you, and it, I recommend if you do write it down, immediately practice it that day or that night, because, uh, sometimes you won't always understand your notes. But if you look at it right away, you'll remember, oh, that's right, that sign was done like this. I remember how they did that sign, or like this, or like this. And you'll, and you'll be able to practice it. So um, I hope this was helpful. Practice your signs and your hand shapes. And um, have fun.